Well, I know you're feeling dehydrated, but I just don't see a place to put an IV in. There's no veins. Would you like to hear about another method of rehydration? Aha. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 600 articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with the lovely nurse Amy, I'm the co-author of the bestsellers, The Survival Medicine Handbook, and also The Ebola Survival Handbook, and designer of the fun new board game, Doom and Bloom's Survival, a great way to get the family together, put down those smartphones, and get interested in the survival mindset. In a disaster, it's possible you might encounter a person in shock who's in desperate need of fluids. IV hydration is certainly the best method of delivery in these cases, but normal saline and other products are by prescription only. As such, they're certainly difficult for the average person to stockpile in an austere setting. Rectal rehydration, also called proctoclysis, may be an alternative in situations where oral rehydration is impossible and IV therapy is unavailable. The large intestine functions to absorb water, electrolytes, and vitamins, but not nutrients, leaving solid waste. It stands to reason that if the colon can absorb fluid introduced from above, it can certainly absorb it from below. In the first decade of the 20th century, John Murphy, a Wisconsin surgeon, introduced a drip method of introducing saline solutions via the rectum. Used in hospital units during World War I, proctoclysis received acceptance as another tool in the medical woodshed. As intravenous fluid administration became more advanced, use of this method diminished, although it's still practiced in some animal cases. Because proctoclysis is rarely used today, I knew little about it. It's not standard medical care. The difficulty that the average person would have obtaining IV fluids, however, made it clear that an alternative fluid delivery system was needed for those unable to be orally hydrated in a survival setting. Indeed, it's the lack of availability of many medical items in times of trouble that first led us to write about fish antibiotics as a survival option many, many years ago. Now, during my research, I found animal studies in the Emergency Medicine Journal. In one study, rabbits were drained of blood until they were severely depleted. A tube was then inserted into their rectums and fluids administered, which led to improvement of vital signs that are used to monitor shock. Another study in 1998 used a procedure with tap water or saline solution in 78 terminally ill cancer patients with success. In the Wilderness and Environmental Medicine Journal, a single case of shock at a remote high altitude location was treated with rectal rehydration. It managed to improve the patient's status enough to allow evacuation to a medical center. The benefit of rectal rehydration is the fact that sterilized water or oral rehydration solutions may be used effectively with this method to improve fluid status. This provides an inexpensive and readily available avenue when intravenous therapy isn't possible in a true survival scenario. To perform proctoclysis on a patient, you'll need the following items. Sterilized water or normal saline or oral rehydration salt solution. A nasogastric tube or a Foley urine catheter with a 10 milliliter syringe, a reservoir container for the fluids, tubing to connect the reservoir container to the NG or Foley catheter, gloves and antiseptics, you have to wash your hands of course, a way to monitor the rate of infusion. In, 19, in the 1998 study involving humans, the fluid was infused at a rate of about 250 cc's an hour, a way to secure the tube in place, a stand to place the reservoir at a level higher than the patient, and equipment to monitor vital signs, blood pressure, pulse, respiration rate, things like that. Now here are my thoughts on this procedure. The fluid should be warmed to normal body temperature to prevent hypothermia, excessive lowering of body temperature. The patient should be placed on their left side. This might actually decrease drainage from the rectum. Closely monitor vital signs throughout the procedure. The nasal gastric tube can be inserted further into the large intestine than the Foley catheter or the bladder catheter. Uh, this might result in improved absorption. The Foley catheter, however, will prevent much of the leakage that you may find with the NG tube. Foley's have an inflatable balloon that can act as a plug. In the cases cited, the NG tube was inserted about 15 inches while the Foley was inserted about 5 to 8 inches and then pulled back gently until the balloon met resistance. Excessive pressure on the rectum from the Foley balloon, however, can cause trauma, so you have to be careful. 
Be prepared to deal with drainage, it could be messy. An enema effect may be observed, especially if high volumes of fluid are given too quickly. Now, if this is observed, stop the procedure. The patient is losing fluids, and that's the opposite of what you want to do. Rectal rehydration should be avoided in cases of diarrhea, as a hyperactive bowel may not be adequately absorbing liquids. The procedure can be uncomfortable. It is not a method to give nutrition. It's not a feeding method. There's evidence that it's been used as torture throughout history. It's important to know that you should never try this or any other medical procedure if there's modern medical help available. The practice of medicine is illegal and punishable by law, so keep this method of rehydration in reserve only for post-apocalyptic, austere, or remote settings where modern medicine doesn't exist. This is Joe Halden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, are you ready to deal with medical issues if medical help is not on the way? Well, with the Survival Medicine Handbook, you'll have a head start on keeping your family healthy in any disaster. Find it on Amazon or on our website at www.doomandbloom.net. Mm -hmm.